Hello and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where we talk math and drink tea. I'm your host, Professor Joseph Van Dye. In this episode, I want to continue our discussion of mathematical cryptography. Last time we talked about how mathematical cryptography really relies on trapdoor functions. Functions where you start with an input and it's really easy to calculate the output. But if you start with the output and try and figure out the corresponding input, that can be really hard. Now there's lots of different ways of measuring how long a given computer program or algorithm will take to run. Typically we'll measure it either in the number of steps the algorithm takes or in the number of single digit operations it takes. When we say that something takes a big O of f of n operations, we mean that it takes a constant times f of n operations at most. So n squared is big O of n squared, clearly. 3 of n squared is also big O of n squared. So is n squared plus 2n minus 5. The smaller order terms just don't end up mattering. Typically, we're going to let n measure the number of digits in our input. So this is going to be measuring how long does something take based on how many digits I have to give it. Now there's two trapdoor functions we're going to care about in this episode. Multiplication and factorization, which we discussed previously, and the discrete log problem, which we'll get to later. Let's start with multiplication, and let's do a very simple product. 549 times 256. Now if we follow the method that most of us learned in grade school, we have to do this digit by digit. So we multiply the 9 by the 6, and we get 54. And then the 9 times the 5, which is in the tens place, so we get 450. And then the 9 times the 2, and the 4 times the 6, and the 4 times the 5, and the 4 times the 2, and the 5 times the 6, and the 5 times the 5, and the 5 times the 2. And then when we're all done, we have to add all of that up and get 140,544. If we assume that each of our inputs is roughly n digits in size, then this will take n squared one-digit multiplications, one for each digit of the left number being multiplied to each digit of the right number. And addition won't add up too much more. Hey, <laughs> get it? So there will be about big O of n squared operations overall. Now let's take a look at factorization. Rather than asking for the complete factorization of an integer, let's just ask for a single non-trivial factor, that is, a factor other than 1 and itself. How do we go about finding such a non-trivial factor? Well, first we can test if 2 is a factor of m. If yes, then hey, 2 is the non-trivial factor we want. If not, then let's test if 3 is a factor of m. If yes, then 3 is the factor we want. If not, then... Well, we tested 4 as a factor of m, and so on, and so on, and so on. You see exactly how this is going. If there is a non-trivial factor of m, then we should be able to find it within big O of m steps, which is big O of 10 to the n. Actually, we can do much better than that. As it turns out, if there's a non-trivial factor, it must be smaller than m to the 1 half, so we can actually do this whole procedure in big O of m to the 1 half, which is still big O of 10 to the n over 2, which is exponential in n. So on the one hand, the multiplication algorithm we've seen it runs in big O of n squared times, whereas the factorization method we've seen runs in big O of 10 to the n over 2 time. One is much faster than the other, and in fact we can speed up both of these. So the multiplication algorithm we gave was big O of n squared. The fastest known multiplication, which is done by fast Fourier multiplication, runs in big O of n log n log log n time. The factorization method we gave here, which is known as trial division, runs in roughly big O of 10 to the n over 2. It's exponential. The fastest known factorization method, the general number field sieve, is, well, this mess. It's an exponential function in n to the 1 third log n to the 2 thirds. So multiplication runs in what's known as polynomial time, whereas the best factorization methods we have run in so-called sub-exponential time. And there is a world of difference between these two. Here's an example. This is the factorization of RSA768. It starts out with 232 digits and factors into two primes. If you take the two primes and multiply them together, that might take a fraction of a second. On the other hand, when this number was originally factored, it took two years to do. And that was with over 2,000 years of actual processor time, distributed over a bunch of computers running simultaneously. The reason this is called RSA768 is because this number has 768 binary bits. And again, with 768 binary bits, it took it 2,000 years of processor time to factor. The recommended security level these days is at least 2,048 bits. Now let's step away from multiplication and factorization and talk about the discrete logarithm problem. 
Before we do that, I'm going to have to introduce a little bit of notation. We're going to write a is congruent to b modulo m if b is the remainder when we divide a by m. So for example, 10 is congruent to 1 mod 3. By the way, this is kind of the way that computer scientists think about modular arithmetic. It's not the way that number theorists such as myself tend to think about modular arithmetic. Now if we start with a large prime p and two integers g and l that are between 1 and p minus 1, we'll see in a moment it's really easy to compute g to the l is congruent to t modulo p. On the other hand, if I give you just p, g, and t, the problem of finding l is the discrete logarithm problem, and it's darn hard. Let's see how easy it is to take powers, and let's do it with the example of 7 to the 9th mod 11. Now we could do this by calculating 7 times 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 7, and then taking that all modulo 11. This requires a total of 8 products, and in general we might expect this to run in big O of p time. But if we stop and think about what we've done, we've actually been rather redundant. Once we've calculated 7 times 7 one time, we don't have to calculate 7 times 7, and 7 times 7, and 7 times 7 all over again. We've already done it. And as a result, if we start to try and optimize this, we can actually do it in 4 products. 7 squared, which is one product, square that, one more product, square that, one more product, and multiply by 7. In general, we can knock this down to big O of log P, or big O of N, products. So that's taking powers. What if we want to actually solve the discrete logarithm and figure out which power was used? So given P, G, and T, how can we find an L such that G to the L is congruent to T mod P? Well, there's kind of one obvious brute force method, and that says calculate g mod p, now calculate g squared mod p, then calculate g cubed mod p, and so on until you find t. And this could take big O of p steps, or roughly again, big O of 10 to the n. Much like with factorization, there are faster ways of solving this, but none are remotely as fast as taking powers. And there you have it, two trapdoor functions which can be used to help keep your data safe. Next time we'll actually see how you can set up a crypto system with them. But I'm out of tea for now. Bye!